following lecture was produced by Glorian Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. Our divine, human, and animal nature. This lecture relates to the spirit, the mind, the psyche, and even the physical body. In order to comprehend this lecture, <coughs> we have to read the chapter number four of the book of Genesis in order to comprehend the relationship of this uh, uh, nature of us with what is written in the Bible in the book of Genesis. When we talk about our divine nature we go there directly into what we call the monad, which is a Greek word that derives, derives, derives from the word uh, monas, Greek word, which means unity. Deep down in our own consciousness, we have uh, our own spirit, which is that unity, that monad that uh, belongs as a drop of water to the big ocean of life that uh, is called in Sanskrit Brahma. Brahma is the spirit of life, the ocean of life from which all the drops, monads, emerge in the universe. Each one of us, deep down into our consciousness, is one drop, one monad. And that is, of course, related with our divine nature. The monad has within three particles related with the ray of creation that we always name as Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva, the three Amatsi Kamno, or the Lord Three, the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. that is within any monad. 
So the Mona has to exercise its, uh, or to develop the power of creation in different levels. And uh, for that, that uh, energetic unity needs the matter. Which is, of course, that other element that work together with the energy. Both elements are intelligent. Those elements rely to the monad itself. The energy is called the father and the matter is called the mother. Even in Latin, the word mater means mother. So this is what we have to understand in relation with our divine nature. Because even physically, if we analyze a physical body, according with the development of science, we learn in the school that we are an organism formed by many atoms and that uh, when the atom is disintegrated the energy is liberated so in the last synthesis our body is of course a condensed energy and that's why uh, when we die, that condensed energy is uh, uh, leaving the body little by little in the tomb. It doesn't matter the way in which that energy should be liberated. That energy, of course, which is within every atom of our physical body, is what we call monad. Or better say, small particles <coughs> of our own particular individual spirit, which give life to all the atoms that compound the physical body. So, as you see, when we talk about the divine nature, we also relate that to the physical body, to the matter. Of course, this divine nature that is uh, organizing the atoms of our physical body is polluted. That's obvious, because our behavior, or because our level of being. So in the universe, there exist different types of matters that relate to the purity or the, of, or of the development of our own particular monad. Let us put an example, for instance, in the Master Jesus of Nazareth, which is the balls of the White Lodge, the Master Abramento. He is a being that belongs to the Ain, as we talk in many lectures, a Paramartha Satya, that has developed absolute consciousness and therefore the matter of his physical body is immortal every single monad that animates every atom of his physical body is awakened is divine is pure 
that body, his physical body, does not belong to this three-dimensional world. Because this three-dimensional world is a fallen world, esoterically, cabalistically speaking. He said is a fallen sephira in which we live. But the physical body of Master Jesus belongs to the fourth dimension, which is not a fallen sephira. It's that dimension that the Bible calls Eden. So he has a body that belongs to Eden. And even within that dimension, the matters of that body has uh, or have different levels according with the development of the spirit of each one of those beings that abide in the fourth dimension. But indeed, we do not uh, uh, belong to the fourth dimension, but to the third of the physical matter. The physical body that we have is a fallen sephira, is not in the state in which it should be. So the divine particles of our own spirit which animate this physical body, the Master Samael Om Veor called them the spiritual particles of our Father which suffer within our, within us, within our matter. Of course, when we refer to the particles of our own monad, which are trapped within our physical body, <coughs> and that suffer because the pollution in which we live, those particles are not only related with our physicality, but also with the protoplasmic bodies that form that that we call our mind, our emotions, which are lunar, inferior. We will say it bestial. So the monad really animates every single body, even the personality that we form in every incarnation or in every return. So you see that these particles really that relate to the different inferior bodies or the inferior quaternary, we will say, because this is how it is called in esotericism. The inferior quaternary that is formed by the physical body, the vital body, the emotional body, and the mental body. That is the inferior quaternary. All those bodies need, of course, the activity of our own spirit in order to be alive. Without the divine, without the spiritual force, no matter can be can exist. And of course, we, this, this, this is why we belong to this inferior kingdom, inferior levels that uh, are called in the Inster philosophy, the will of samsara. So, The monad, that which is divine, needs to enter into this uh, lunar matter in order to learn the mechanicity of nature. Of course, when we uh, enter into meditation in order to be in contact with our own spirit. We need to 
pacify, to silence, to quiet these matters in order for us as consciousness to be liberated and even the forces of the body to leave the body, all the bodies, and to reunite with that which is the monad, the main monad, because these particles are controlled by the law of karma and by our own particular monad that acts under the law of cause and effect from the superior worlds, from the sixth dimension, our own monad controls its own particles according to the law of cause and effect, the law of karma. And that's why uh, when we say that we are devolving or we are suffering, our monad is also suffering because we are part of it. So when we meditate and when we relax all of these vehicles that we have in order to become in contact with our own monad, of course, this is why God, the spirit, our own particular monad, our own particular inner God will tell us what to do. Because our own particular individual monad knows for sure what is what we need. <coughs> because everything relates to it. Of course, as you know, when this which is divine nature entangles into that matter which is not pure, whether the matter is physical or internal, emotional, mental, that creates in the physical world, at the level in which we are, that which is called Hanasmus, that we were talking in many lectures, or Marut. A nature which is, of course, divine, an animal at the same time. Inferior and superior. Of course, all of that or every single element in the universe is like that. There exist, of course, individuals in the universe, Maruts or Hanas Muzin, that are completely divorced from their particular individual monad in the sixth dimension because they no longer have any longing for uh, regeneration. Those uh, individuals like that are completely 100% demons that abide, of course, in the inferior worlds. We are demons too, but not 100%. We are 97%. But this is good. Because the 3% is that element within us that wants to become not 3, but 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 100% united with the divine. And that's why we come into this knowledge, or we search for it, in order to acquire, to attain that religare. This is a Latin word. Re means again. Ligare means to bind. So religare means to bind again. And from religare comes the word religion. To bind again those particles to the divine. 
And that's why uh, every individual that submits themselves to a discipline in order to acquire that union, they are called religious from the strict esoteric point of view, the meaning of religion, religious. The acquisition of the union of every particle of our being to our own particular main monad, little by little, through a discipline, is called religion. And of course, all the orthodox organizations that exist, that we call religions in the world, teach that, but in, the, in the, a very esoteric, cryptic manner. And it's not a matter of believing in that, but to practice that, that is to be a religious. It's not a matter of memorizing what is written in certain books. It don't need to be a religious person. It's to perform what all other individuals taught in the past. And of course, the main practice in order to acquire that is meditation. That's why we always insist in meditation, because through meditation, we delve within our own particular humanity that we have in order to attain that rebinding little by little and of course the explanation of how the spirit the monad became or started to unbind himself or the particles of his self in order to organize the matter in order to acquire knowledge about the development of his own particles, his own powers in the matter is what we call involution. Do not mistake that word or confuse that word with devolution which is different. Involution means the way in which the spirit descend into the matter from the superior dimensions in order to finally appear in a three-dimensional world by acquiring, of course, experience of that development through the superior dimensions. If we call that evolution, it might be, of course, a little bit right, but not quite, because it's becoming from above to below. So it's coming in from above down. So that's what involution of the spirit into the matter. Now, devolution is another thing. Is a Degeneration or the contrary of evolution. So, in the involution, there is, listen carefully, in the involution, there is evolution and devolution. In every single dimension. And this is what we have to understand when we apply the word involution. So the spirit, of course, as the Master Samael on the or explains carefully and in detail in his book, The Revolution of Beelzebub, explains there how 
in the beginning, in the mental dimension, that we call the Saturnial round, the physical matter that we are using now was only a mineral element in that past, past, past cosmic day. But our own monad, of course, was activating that seed, physical seed, in order to acquire knowledge of that development little by little through the involution of life from the superior dimensions to that three-dimensional world. We have that knowledge. We have that wisdom in our body. We read it, of course, in the book The Revolution of Beelzebub. But if we sit down and meditate and start navigating into our own particular matter in a ret retrospective manner, we eventually will reach those states. Because the physical body that we have comes from that age, very ancient time, physically speaking. Do not think that our spirit made this physical body or the particles of our own divine spirit animate this physical body and, and, and that he learned that only in this life. No. That knowledge he acquired through the ages, through many rounds. That's precisamente, precisely the development of that element that the Bible called Jehovah Elohim. You see? Our own particular spirit, I told you, the monad, has three atoms. The atom of the Father, the atom of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, which in Kabbalah are called Keter, Chokhma, Bina. In India, Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva. So Shiva, Bina, the Holy Spirit, is that intelligence that develops its own element, its own intelligence, through the rounds, through the development of matter. So it does it through the matter. I repeat, the Bible uh, synthesized the name of Jehovah Elohim as the Lord. It says the Lord, or, or, or Jehovah. But this, the Lord Jehovah, or Jehovah Elohim, as we call, is Bina, the Holy Spirit. And every single individual monad has that within. So that means that every one of us has Shiva within. Jehovah within. The Holy Spirit within. It's the same. Different titles for the same force. Creative force. <coughs> that force, of course, of Shiva. The Holy Spirit is always divided in two forces. Which are called... Uh, the two forces or the two polarities of the sexual energy. Because this is how the monad acts to the matter, through the sexual energy. That determinant energy that the Master Moria called determinant energy exists everywhere in the universe. Every planet, every sun, and every kingdom of every planet exists that determinant energy. 
which always polarize positive and negative. The negative aspect, or we will say the passive aspect of that sexual energy, relates with a multiplication or generation of the matter. And the positive, the active, belongs to the development of knowledge, the intelligence within that matter. Because this is precisely the objective of the universe, to exist with knowledge, to know about ourselves. You see, here enters that aphorism or that uh, axiom that is written uh, in the temple of Delphi. May know thyself and you will know the universe and the gods. Because everything relates to us, you know. If our own particular spirit, if our own particular monad is a drop of the great ocean of life, if we know that drop, we will know the ocean. But to know that drop means to know ourselves in all our particles, because that drop really unfolds in many particles in order to uh, manifest its own power, its own creation, its own development. So, if we do not meditate, if we don't sink into meditation, how are we are going to acquire the knowledge of Brahma or the universe? Because we are part of it. So, through the ages, in the different rounds, in the superior dimensions, that matter became to crystallize finally in the three-dimensional world, in the present cosmic day in which we are right now. And this is what the Bible call Adam. Which in the beginning, you, where you read Adam, which is that human being created from the dust of the earth. The earth is the matter that was, of course, developing from the superior dimensions and finally crystallizing in a three-dimensional world. And from that emerged Adam. Talking here only physically, we are referring to this physical body that we have. But of course, the Bible calls that Adam male-female. In, in Greek terms, we will say androgynous. Andros, men. Genica, woman. Men, woman, together in one body. At that time, of course, when this new uh, physical body appeared in the three-dimensional world in the continent of Lemuria, that Adam was androgynous, physically speaking. But that physical body that appeared there in Lemuria was the outcome of previous developments of the matter that that monad acquired in previous cosmic days, rounds, or we say cosmic rounds, in the fourth dimension, in the fifth dimension. This is how it comes. So, finally, of course, <coughs> the body was divided, as you know, Jehovah Elohim is written in the book of Genesis, took Eve out of Adam. In other words, took the female aspect of that androgynous, and with it, he made a woman. So now, of course, we are divided. But the one that did that was the intelligence, Bina, the Holy Spirit. under the direction, of course, of great masters or cosmo creators that already did that in the past. Because we are learning, we are students. 
So if you meditate, if you concentrate in your own matter, you will find that. And you will find that really this matter is always organized thanks to the, the determinant energy that the Master Moria called the sexual energy. And it is too easy to understand and comprehend because before this physical body being what it is, it was a sperm and an ovum. Remember that when the sperm fecundates the ovum, the sperm mingles with the ovum. And from that mixture comes the physical body when it's divided into two cells, four cells, eight cells, the fetus is formed in the womb, and eventually that emerges out from the womb of the woman. So, that seed, of course, within the woman, we see the recapitulation of these uh, statements that we are explaining here, coming from the past. In the womb of the woman, nature repeats again the same processes in order for finally to appear the physical body that we have. This is precisely wonderful. Just by analyzing this intellectually is good. But better if we do it consciously in order to verify that, you know, in order to know what we call our human nature. Because we have a human nature. But the only thing that we have of humanity is the physical body has a shape of a human being. But it's still the spirit needs to develop, to create the rest of that humanity within us. Let us not fall into the mistake of thinking that when we talk about human, we are referring only to the physical body. The human being as it is described in the book of Genesis, relates not only to the physical world, but to the fourth dimension, to the fifth, sixth dimension. When we reach the sixth dimension, when we achieve again the religare, when we bind against to our monad in that process, then we reach the real level of human being. That is the goal of our human nature. At least we have the shape of a human in the physical world. Because internally, still we are animals. The animal nature, which is the lower aspect of ourselves, still exists inside of us. Even the physical body is not human 100%. Because a, 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 a true human body is immortal. We have only the shape, but all the attributes of the physical body called human being relates to the fourth dimension. And this is precisely what we need to, to develop. But of course, <coughs> the monad develops also, as we said, within us, the mind, the emotion, that, that also relates to our own nature. The emotional aspect and the mental aspect that we use in this day and age are not human, but animal. Yes, we think, we analyze, we use the intellect. But uh, in Gnosticism, we know that there are two types of intellect. Illuminated 
intellect, that means an intellect that is under the direction of the monad. And an ordinary intellect that is not under the command of the monad. Which is the intellect that the billions of people in this planet Earth use. That's why we said we are intellectual animals. But the illuminated intellect is something that we have to acquire through meditation, to comprehension, to deep analysis. By acquiring experience, of course, in this. When the, we explain this, I remember the book of Genesis, the chapter 4, that states, And Adam knew his wife, and she engenders a son whose name was Cain. And she said, I have engendered a man. Thanks to the Lord. The Bible says, thanks to Jehovah. Thanks to Yav He Bav He. The whole thing, of course, implies deep knowledge. It literal, literally said, and Adam, the brain, New Eve, sexual organ, his wife. And she, through fornication, conceived and bear Cain, the sensual mind in the brain, and said, I, the sexual organ, have gotten a man, a sensual mind in the brain, from the creative energy or the determinant energy, again, from the Lord, or from Yod Chava. A phrase, of course, that we have to explain. Because as you know, Yod Chava Elohim, Jehovah Elohim, the Lord created, as I said, or as we explained, the physical body that we have. But it was divided. But in every single body, as we already know, the two forces, Adam and Eve, became polarized in our body, the passive or negative energy, in order to multiply the species. It was settled down in the sexual organ. That is called Eve. But the positive aspect of that determinant energy settled down in the brain in order to develop knowledge, intelligence. So that is what we call Adam and Eve as energetic polarities. Because these two forces, positive and negative, or passive and active, manifest in different levels. Physically, of course, as sexes, we are active and the woman is passive. But in both bodies, woman and man, we have also the two polarities. The passive is the sexual organ and the active is the brain. And this is something that we have to understand because this is always we talk about the determinant energy, which is the sexual creative force that manifests in different levels and different aspects, not only in the physical world, but in the internal worlds. So when we talk about Adam and Eve, it's something very deep. We, we, we don't have to fall into the mistake of thinking that it's only the representation as people that have infantile mind still think of one man and one woman, physically speaking, in the past, in the garden, have, as this is written symbolically. 
we have, of course, to dig, to delve into that through meditation. Because all that are the secrets of knowledge. So, of course, the objective, as we said, of the spirit inside of us, through the matter that we already have with the shape of a human being, is to create inside the other elements that belongs to the human being. The second element inside of us, let me talk to you, or talk to you, now in relation with the Mahabharata. Just to touch that, because in last time we touched that. But the Mahabharata explains that beautifully in what they call the Pandavas. The lower aspect, the physical aspect of the physical body is called among the Pandavas, the five brothers of the Mahabharata, it's called Bhima. The very strong guy that has a mass and fights with it. That's the physical body. And then the second, the internal aspect is called Yurishthira. That is, of course, the bodhicitta that we have to acquire, which is the Dharma, the knowledge. That's why it says that Yurishthira was the son of Dharma. But that Dharma is the doctrine, is the knowledge that we have to develop. Not intellectually, but alive, you know, consciously inside of us. And that places always in the vital body. Because that's precisely the place of the bodhicitta, the four dimension, that aspect. And of course, after that becomes the, the twin brothers, Nakula and Sahadeva. That's how they call it in the Mahabharata. Astral body, mental body, humans. To finally reach the top of it, which is Arjuna. Which is the causal body. So these are the, the five aspects, the five brothers. They must exist within us. But they don't exist. But we have to create them. Because each one of us has a possibility of doing Creating that within. So the Bible explains that. That in order to create that. Well they need the activity of two, the two polarities. Adam and Eve. And that's why the book of Genesis explains that. When the monad finally acquired the physical body that we have. It says well now is the moment to start. He needs the knowledge of that. Gnosis. Let us create that with the two polarities, hmm? Adam and Eve, which is the brain and the sexual organ in each one of us. So we have, we have to acquire control of our brain and our sexual force. But for that, we have to remember God. That's always we advise, we always say, the one that does that is the Holy Spirit, Bina, Shiva. That intelligence, which is our monad, act through the pineal gland. That's our, our physicality. The pineal gland is the main organ that we have to use in order to do this work. The pineal gland is a seat of the Holy Spirit. In many lectures we stated in the pineal gland we have the atom of the Holy Spirit. Astrologically we say Jupiter or I mean Neptune, Poseidon controls the pineal gland of the Holy Spirit, the forces of the water. So by 
concentrating in our own pineal gland, in our own Holy Spirit. This is how we connect through the monad. That's why the main work that the Master Samaelon will start to ask is, remember your being. Remember yourself. But when we say remember yourself, remember your being, he, he is not talking about remember your lust, your ego. It means remember your monad. Because that's the reality in us. The real self. And the way to do it is through the pineal gland. And that's why the importance of meditation. Because when we are concentrated in meditation, if we are remembering our God, then the pineal gland, the chakra, sahasrara, enter into activity. And this is how God, from above, enters and starts controlling his particles, which are related with us, with our own humanity, physically speaking. Because he has to transform the other parts of himself into human through alchemy because he needs to create that humanity if we continue fornication how is our own God from the pineal gland going to control the sexual energy and only to create the rest of humanity in us it's impossible because through the orgasm spasm fornication we continue multiplying and fortifying the animal elements that we already have and develop inside of us. So that's why we have to stop doing that in order to create the, the other type of humanity. But that implies, of course, willpower. And willpower is always related to the pineal gland. We then also we say our motto is telema, willpower. Yeah, but that telema is in the pineal gland. Relates to the human consciousness, to the human soul. Because the seat of the soul, the human soul, is the pineal gland. Descartes stated that, and it's true. So in the, human, uh, in the pineal gland, we have the human soul, we have the Holy Spirit. We have telema. And that pineal gland is what we call in Kabbalah, a razan le cabel razan means willpower do not mistake razan with desire which is different desire is below the pina gland is in the mind in the brain in other words but not in the pina gland the pina gland is always razan le cabel Ratsan le Kabel means the will to receive. Kabel is to receive. Kabbalah. There is where we receive the true Kabbalah from God. Because the brain also receives. But that, that's Ratsan is desire, which is different. When the Master Samael explained that there are two types of Kabbalists, those types of Kabbalists receive in the head. The Ratsan le Kabel. Will to receive from God is in the pineal gland, but the will to receive from Klippath is in the brain. That's why it is just very confused, right? So, of course, we receive in the brain, but we have to receive to learn how to receive directly from God because God is the one that teaches the human soul. In this world, of course, I am teaching you in your brain. But you need to learn from your God. Because what I know is what I acquired through my God, through my meditation, through my pineal gland, which is my antenna in my physical body, from which I receive the information that I give, that I enjoy, that I develop in me in order to develop the human being. The same as you do. And for that meditation is a technique the doctrine of Buddha, Buddhism, is the doctrine that we have to learn there in order to acquire that. Because Buddha teaches 
how to control the brain, the mind, through the pineal gland. That's the doctrine of Sakyamuni and many other Buddhists of that uh, tradition. So, Adam knew his wife, meaning that the humanity or that individual knew about this knowledge, the hypnosis, and through that knowledge knew his wife. But in the beginning, as you know, in the past, when in the tree of knowledge of good and evil, when that determinant energy called serpent, which is the instructor, came to teach the brain and the sex, because the serpent is related to the brain and the sex, the consciousness couldn't do what is the right thing to do and fornicate it. As a human being, with a physical body of human being, fornication is wrong. So, the human being, physically speaking, fornicated. So, using the tree of knowledge in the wrong way. Not in the heavenly way. Because from the pineal gland, Jehovah Elohim was ready to help us. But Adam was tempted by Eve, the sexual force. And couldn't control the spasm, the orgasm of animals. Why? Because the whole nature that we have within is animal. So he has to learn. Trying to learn, he couldn't. And therefore he created another nature that shouldn't be created. But Eve, that was a sexual force that created that nature... Because this is a creative force. Created that nature with fornication and placed it in the brain. So Adam said, <coughs> Adam knew his wife in that way. Adam, the brain, knew his wife, his sexual organ, and created, and the sexual organ created Cain. That Cain, of course, relates to the brain. An element that was developed within the brain. So Adam saw, or the brain saw, well, I have now a mind. Because the sexual energy said, I created a man. Thanks to the Lord. Who is the Lord? The Lord is the creative energy. yod He bav He, Jehovah Elohim, Binah, the Holy Spirit, Shiva, is a sexual energy. I have created this mind that I have. Thanks to the Lord, he says the Bible. Yeah. Unfortunately, through fornication. And that's why it is written that that's, that mind that we created was not heavenly, was not human. And that mind became identified with the physical world. Because the brain, as you know, works through the senses and through the five senses is how we enter in contact with the physical world and of course because we became identified with the physical world instead of controlling the physical world and transforming the impressions of the physical world in the right way we just start eating impressions without digestion or without digesting them the outcome was an indigestion called Cain. Start identifying with the physical world, of course, tilling the ground. And just trying to make something this in this physical world. This is what we are. You see? That mind that we have is not human. It's inhuman. Only an inhuman mind kills. Now, after that, of course, through this type of knowledge, or through the tree of good and evil, through that, he says that Eve 
was pregnant again and bare or engendered Abel, Habel, the brother of Cain. And where we place that Abel, Habel? That, of course, is his relation with the consciousness in the pineal gland, here. Because that is the seat of the soul, the pineal gland. But that Habel, or human soul, was very weak. Because Cain was so identified, the mind was so identified with the physical world, that the consciousness became a slave of, of, of that. But Abel, still uh, having experience and having knowledge about the world, is how we are now, very weak. We say we are 97% Cain and 3% Abel. That's the reality of us. So, of course, uh, the ego, the mind, because the mind is ego, ego is mind. Identify with this physicality, wanting just to satisfy this physical world. And in the field, which is called Shaddai, Shada, field in Hebrew, which relates to the sexual organ, when that came and that pineal gland, the soul in the pineal gland, were in the field without the presence of God. You see, here enters again the necessity of remember our monad. When you go into this knowledge without taking care a bit of your own inner God, trying to do yourself things by yourself, with your mind, even with your consciousness, being weak as we are, the outcome is that the mind will kill the consciousness. Because the mind, Cain, is 97% strong, has a lot of strength, and Abel is trying to do his own goods through God. Remember that it's written that Cain was offering his, the outcome of his work, which is the physical work. We want to please God with our physicality. That's why it is laughable, funny, to see in TV people that think that because you give a lot of money or because you make a lot of things in the physical world for this or that, that God is pleased. No. God doesn't like that type of Cain offerings. God only likes your own particular individual monad. Likes. If you offer a sheep a lamb from the particles that we have. If you meditate and you liberate one sheep of all the sheep that are trapped in our physicality, and if you liberate that, your mother is pleased. Because I have parts of him. And only that acquired for meditation. That's why the monarch was pleased with Abel. Because this is what he wants. He doesn't want anything in this physical world. Why? We are already slave of this physicality. Mm -hmm. But we always are attached to build in this physical world. To build this, to build that. To have a, a lot of members, a lot of people here. And we see a lot of people and gathering and say, oh, we are strong. Strong how? Like Cain? It doesn't matter if it's one or it's many. The main thing is to understand, to comprehend that we have to be strong in Abel because this is what God's like. And that's what we need to meditate. To increase our humanity. The only one that can increase your humanity is you. I cannot do it for you. I remember one time when we were gathering with the Master Samael on the Or. We were going to meditate. And one of my friends or missionaries at that time asked the master, Master, I always had difficult with my own cane, my own, my own mind, to comprehend that, to liberate my able, my consciousness. Can you give me a hand in order to comprehend, in order to annihilate? 
And then the master says, I don't understand your question. I am giving you the hand. Didn't I write revolutionary psychology? Didn't I write the great rebellion? <coughs> I gave you the hand already. Now, if you want me to go inside of you and to comprehend your ego, in order for you to annihilate it, that's impossible. You have to comprehend your ego. I cannot do that for you. And if I do that for you, it won't be my consciousness, not yours. So I'm sorry. I cannot give you that hand. Because it's the effort that you have to do it. You have to do it. The Lord, Christ. If you incarnate him eventually, he will help you in that way. But here now, I'm going to go into your mind and to help you to comprehend that is... It's impossible. That's black magic. So you have to do it. You have to do your own efforts. And if you want a hand, read my book, Revolutionary Psychology, The Great Rebellion. And of course, at that time, the revolution of dialectic was not written yet. He was writing it. So, it has a point, you know. We have to do our own effort. But remember, Cain and Abel is within us, here in the head. Cain is in the brain, and Abel is in the pineal gland, together with God, because he likes his offerings. Because the Holy Spirit, Jehovah Elohim, is in the pineal gland too. And all the parts which are above him relate to the pineal gland, to the chakra sahasrara. So therefore, when trying to develop that, but forgetting God, as I said in the beginning, being in that field, Cain rose against Abel and killed him. And how he killed him? Through fornication. This is how the Bible explains. Through fornication, again trying to develop their reality within and of course the mind was stronger than the soul and from that time the consciousness sank more into the soft consciousness infra consciousness so abel of course or habel is dead and Cain is very strong in the seven levels of the mind. Seven plus multiplied by seven is 49. That's why everybody that wants to acquire that humanity has to avenge Abel by killing Cain or transforming Cain, that, that mind that we have there, little by little. And that's within us. So when the Bible talks about Cain and Abel, always understand that is related with the psyche, with the mind. And when it talks about Adam and Eve, it's the two polarities, the sexual force related always. Because the mind and the psyche utilize the two polarities always. In order to devolve more or to regress more into the animality, or to create the, that which is divine. It's up to us. Because all of us is, are I mean, within. So of course, <coughs> through this knowledge, is how we develop that divine nature. But first, we had to develop the human nature. Because first is the human and then is the divine. But the door of being the, the, the development that we have to do is through uh, meditation. Because only through meditation is how we know ourselves. To meditate is to comprehend us ourselves, to understand ourselves. Always in contact with our own spirit. To meditate is not 
to uh, mechanically repeat certain mantras or to sit in certain position, oriental position, because people in this day and age are so identified with the East, with India, where they, since they are children, they sit down with the cross legs like that. You know, Buddhists also do that since they are children. In Japan, for instance, they call it uh, 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 seiza, to sit down, but on your heels, by crossing your, your uh, calves and sit on your heels. That's another not other way. When I was uh, uh, practicing a long time ago uh, martial arts, I remember this teacher from Japan. He was coming, sitting there, and talk, talking, talking, and, and like nothing, sitting on, on his own heels. And I was also, of course, because we had to imitate the master, and he was teaching the martial art, and I was in pain. My feet were dumb, numb, you know. And I was just not even listening when he was talking. I was just waiting for the moment in order to release. And when, I, and when that moment arrived, I was not capable of standing on my feet. <laughs> And I lie down, you know, in my in the, in the on the floor in order for 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 that uh, uh, sleepy state of my legs to go off in order to stand. Meanwhile, the little Japan master just stood in like nothing, you know. And I say, of course, he, he he's doing that since childhood. You know what I mean? So therefore, because meditation is very uh, is something is is a discipline that is taught in the East. And it's very common. But in the West, it's not. So when we teach this, immediately people think that we have to imitate even the physicality of, of, of those masters. No. If we are not from India or, or from Japan or from China, if we don't have a custom to sit in that way, well, they sit down in a chair, comfortable, in order to relax, in order to meditate. Because meditation is a discipline of the consciousness. The consciousness Try to discipline your mind, your own consciousness. You know, it's not trying to discipline the mind of somebody else, but your own self. And when you do that, you are the way that you are knowing yourself, and this is how you know the divine, the human, and the animal. Matthew Samaelon Ver, for instance, explains in the book Gazing at the Mystery. How the black cat is capable of taking you out of your physical body, consciously. Did you ever read that uh, book or that chapter of that book? If you didn't read it, read it. Buy the book and read it. <coughs> it's called the Black Nowell of the Cat. It's a very powerful, I mean... The Nawal is the monad, listen, is the monad of the cat. Obviously, that monad animates all the atoms of that cat, his physicality. But the appearance of that monad is not like the cat, but like a human, kind of human shape. Well, the only difference is that instead of feet, he has the form of the feet of a cat and instead of hands the paws of a cat and instead of a head of a human being the head of a cat because that monad is a cat right? it's simple right but of course i know that not because i read the book but in the beginning of course i read the book what the master said but i practiced that many times I meditated, in other words. Because in order to meditate, you need to concentrate. You concentrate in the animal, meaning that you are meditating in the animal. Part of yourself is part of that animal too. Because everything is united in the universe. We are not separated. That's why the animal can help you. In that sense, of course. Not to comprehend your ego, but to take you out of your body consciously. So I remember uh, when I was in Canada, 
Toronto teaching this doctrine. Somebody gave me a beautiful black cat. It was a kitten. And I always protect him, and he was my friend, very close friend of mine. And uh, he grew very strong, because those cats are always very strong. And he always talked to me. Of course, I never understood what he said physically, but internally I understood, because he communicates with the animals, is easy to understand. So I was uh, waiting for him to grow to the right size and age in order for me to work with it as the Master Samael explains. So I concentrated on him. I was meditating. Of course, remembering my being. My pineal gland was active. Not to forget my being and concentrating on him. Talking to him telepathically. Of course, in the physical plane, it was an animal. And all of a sudden, I saw how he transformed himself into that gigantic animal. You see? That was the monad. You see, animal is a word that comes from the Latin anima, which means soul. So that soul, that anima, that animal, became huge. I remember I saw it at like the size of a pine tree, <clears throat> huge. And as I described, with the face of a cat, paws and feet of a cat, all black. And then uh, since I read the book of the Master already, I knew that, that that was the way that he was going to transform. He says, can you please take me out of my body? So I thought that he was going to do in the way that the Master described in the book. But uh, he did it, of course, but before that, he was invoking certain forces from the galaxy. I remember that the anima, the Nawal, said, I invoke the forces of the galaxy in order to calm down, in order to do this that I'm going to do, something like that. And then I was in it, what forces of the galaxy? What, uh, what is, I mean, for me, it was something new. And then he came down and then took me with his paws from my hands out of my body. Like uh, when a giant takes a, a puppet out of, you know, because he really was in relation with me. He was a giant. And he uh, was out consciously. Of course, I understood that through that concentration, through that meditation, I get in contact with the monad of that creature that in the physical plane was an animal, was a cat. Because when you concentrate in that body, the particles of that monad are animating that body and obviously are in contact and immediately enter in contact with the divine. And like that, of course, with other elements of nature. You concentrate, you analyze. And eventually you go and discover the divine part of it. Same way when you meditate in a plant, as we explained in other lectures, you discover the anima, the soul, the, the, the divine element which is within everything. And this is how you discover that uh, all this nature is related with the divine. The problem is that the humanity of this planet already forgot about that because he's not in contact with it. Even though animals, plants and minerals are in contact with their own monad. But since we don't believe in that, because we think that it's necessary to believe in that, for instance, I don't believe in that. I don't need to believe in that. Because I had experiences, I know. I saw many elementals, many monads from the plants, from animals. And had experiences with other monads which are more evolved, that we call masters. So therefore, I know that they exist, because I have direct experience with it. Consciously, through my meditations, through my practices. Not by believing. I don't need to believe. 
The people that never had any experience of that kind need to believe in something. Or not to believe it. You can deny it as well. But when you acquire that type of experience, to deny it or to accept it is really irrelevant. Because it's there, you remember. And that's precisely the point of Gnosticism. Your Gnosis is developed through meditation, to experience, to your consciousness. And this is how you go into the Bible, read the Bible, and understand the symbols, Kabbalistic symbols of the Bible, according to your development. You don't fall into mistakes of interpreting the sacred scriptures literally, because everything is symbolic, and in different manners. In your development, you are discovering the different levels of that development within you. But if you don't care about that, also, you become creative and, de and developed that what we call in the lecture, in the other lecture, the ugly nature. Because there is another ugly nature, which is this nature that we created artificially, in which we live, that we call civilization. In this civilization, you find chairs, tables, buildings, cars, neighborhoods, restaurants. All of that is built, created by Cain. Not by Abel. Cain utilizes Abel as a slave in order to do that. Consciousness. And therefore, humanity in this day and age, this type of humanity that we have in the planet Earth, is identified with this artificial nature that we create, that is our ugly nature. Because if you compare this artificial nature that we have here with the nature that has intelligence, as we explained, related with the forest, the garden, the mountains, the lakes, the rivers, you find here, what will you find here in this artificial nature that is created by Cain, by this subjective intellectuality that we use in the brain? Instead of fresh air, prana, we find smog. People are dying because of smog. Cain invented, of course, different ways in order to gratify desires of the mind. You find the cities, people that... Uh, after working very hard, uh, they say that they are intelligent. They go out of their buildings in order to relax themselves, and they smoke tobacco or marijuana. They pollute their divine nature or their physicality with something artificial created by Cain. And of course, most of this humanity worship that artificial ugly nature created by Cain. I don't want to say, I don't mean that there is not civilizations that can be uh, aligned to vibrate according to the divine force because exist but not in the planet Earth. Other individuals from other planets of all, or in the past other civilizations develop other, other technology, other artificial nature, but that was not separated from the monad, from the spirit. They were building a civilization that were developed according to the monad, to the spirit, in order to develop themselves positively. But in this day and age, we don't have that civilization here. This is an ugly, an ugly civilization, an ugly artificial nature that we created. And you find that people worship this type of civilization. There is no God. Atheism is worshipped. 
And most of them want to explain the origin of the universe through Cain, subjective reasoning. They think that the universe existed and that the only universe that exists in this is this physical world, physical universe. And they just theorize with all the dimensions. They theorize that maybe the fourth dimension exists and they're trying to penetrate the fourth dimension. But we don't believe in the fourth dimension, the fifth or sixth or seventh. We experience that. Personally, I have experienced that. So I don't need to believe in that. It's not that I am theorizing. I'm talking about my experience. You maybe experience that or maybe not. But those people that are identified with the physicality, the physical world, the three-dimensional world, are only created this ugliness in which we live. In which we only talk about uh, food and clothing, according to the fashion, and how to lose weight. Really? What to eat in order to lose weight. Everything related with the physicality. And moolah. Money. Money, of course. Right? That's the main thing. Unfortunately, the unfortunately, in this planet Earth, the law of karma, the divine law, utilizes money in order to punish or reward when you live in a city, of course. Here, we live in the city. We have to pay bills of electricity, water, and all that in order to survive. This is precisely the organization of Cain in this planet Earth, called the Black Lodge. Organizing everything in order to make money, to, to make rich few people there in order to exploit the others. It's an ugly civilization, really, based on, on, on Cain. And Cain continues, not only kill the soul in ancient times, but still killing it and killing and killing nature. Now, now we are destroying nature. The beautiful, divine nature, we are destroying it for the sake of this ugliness that we have in these cities. Isn't it that sad, really? But this is what we are. So, people are so identified and even go on to the college to study that in order to keep building this ugliness. Of course, that ugliness comes from within. Because this society is the outcome of the individual. Without the individual society, one won't exist at all. So if this ugliness exists in this planet Earth, wars, hunger, assassination, robbery, and all that which you know in this day and age, it's because it exists inside of us. It's the outcome of us. We created that. I said, as I said in another lecture, if you want to comprehend, for instance, who made that table, and then you concentrate in that table, and you discover that that table is part of nature, from the wood of nature. And who took that wood from nature in order to make that table? Or oh, somebody else did it. Somebody went into the forest and cut the tree. And after that, that tree went into the lumber yard. And other employees were there shaping the wood. Finally, the carpenter brought the wood and started making the table. So then we understand, we comprehend that the making of that table needed the intelligence Evil intelligence, we will say, because sometimes we don't need to cut a tree, but in order to make business, they do it. The evil intelligence to cut the tree, to bring into the lumber, and to do that, and many intelligences were, were necessary there. And only to finally to have the table that we have in a room, varnished or decorated. But the one that thought how to make that table somebody else that invented that table shape. So therefore, when he invented that, he was concentrated, and finally he brought that from his mind, from his cane. He says, oh, this table will make a lot of money. Good invention. 
If I talk now with the necessary people, they will bring all the elements and, and do this invention and to make a lot of money. Doesn't matter if we kill uh, the beautiful divine nature outside, but we have to make money. This is how this society develops. So, of course, we arrive at the conclusion that in order to have the chairs that we have, the dresser that we have, the car that we have, everything needs intelligence. People that use their brain in order to ensemble all of those elements in order to make this ugly nature. You cannot, I, I, I admit that you cannot think, it's impossible for you to think that you will bring all the elements that you need in order to, be, to, to make a table, a simple table. Wood, for instance, leave it there in the room, close the room, and it says, okay, in half an hour I will come back and that wood will become that table. Now, right? You know very well that you need a carpenter. There are many processes in order to become a table. The same thing happened with nature, this divine nature. It doesn't appear like that, like the ignoramuses think that by an, an explosion comes nature, the Big Bang, right? Or by mechanical evolution, everything came, which is a tree, which is an animal, a plant, just by chance. Well, if that's true, let us put uh, the elements in order to build a car there in, in the shop. They're there for one week or one, one year to see if that will build a car. It will need the intelligence. Our stupid intelligence will need to, to, to build that, but at least intelligence, which is dumb, right? in order to create that. But then there are people in this planet Earth that think that nature, the universe, is not intelligence. That in order to destroy an atom, we, we needed the intelligence of great scientists to build the atomic bomb that was intelligent, evil intelligence, to destroy the atom. But in order to build an atom, which is already built, ah, oh, it's by chance. It doesn't need. But to destroy, yeah. Listen, this, this is the psychology or the wisdom of this day and age. To destroy, you need intelligence. But to build, you don't. This is what it says. The Big Bang and everything by chance. The evolution created everything without intelligence. But in order to destroy that, you need intelligence. Is that really congruent? Is that the way that we think? This is precisely the way that many people think in this planet. Why? Because they don't meditate. They just think and think. Thinking, thinking. Cain is always trying to find the origin of the universe by thinking. That's not the way. The only one that can know the origin of the universe is the consciousness united with the being in the pineal gland through meditation. Based on logical concepts. And what it is there. And this is how we develop. So this is how we enter into the comprehension of our divine human and animal nature. Do you have questions? What does uh, the root word of uh, evolution mean? The root evolution is in devolution, involution. To volute is to spin, right? That is to vol volatile, I guess, to spin. And here's because the creative force with the solar force spins, whether clockwise or counterclockwise. Evolution is clockwise spiral. and also in a spiral, like the quantum, the quantum phenomena evolves or revolves, right? From that comes the word, for instance, evolution, involution, devolution, revolution. You see? And we have to understand uh, uh, that the meaning of that, which is precisely the way with the energy can go down 
evolving or revolving down or up or backwards or ahead, right? All depends on the consciousness. Yes? Why Jehovah Elohim protected uh, Cain? Protected him in the way of, uh, uh, of uh, not losing his particles because the particles of the being are trapped within the mind, within Cain. And those particles cannot be annihilated. Only need to be liberated. In order to be liberated, we have to take the seals, the seal or the mark which is precisely a stamp on the forehead of Cain, the mind. The Master says, the mind has 49 levels. To take the seal of all those levels implies a lot of concentration, meditation, and alchemical work. Remember that the book of Revelation explains how the Lord, the Lamb, take the first seal, the second seal, the seven seals. Those seven seals relate obviously, to that seal that uh, Jehovah Elohim put on the forehead, in the mind, in other words, of Cain. We are Cain. So we have the opportunity to regenerate ourselves. That's why he for, forgave us in, in, in a certain level. Because if he will condemn us completely because of our transgression, we will be lost. But still, that's why we receive this knowledge. Because the gods that represent Jehovah Elohim is giving this knowledge in order for us as Cain to uh, die within himself and to reborn as superior being. But for that, we had to have uh, to take the seal of that uh, uh, of Cain from the forehead. I believe that that seal is 666. That's the synthesis of that seal. The beast, 666. Yeah. You mentioned that you know, we can't do the work by ourselves. We need our divine being. We need our inner being. If we just do the work without turning to our divine being, will we uh, evolve faster than those who are not working on themselves at all? The question is, will we devolve Faster than other people, if, if, if we if what if we don't do the work on the, the work without the help of our being? Uh, if we do the work without the help of our, our real being, yeah. it is not possible to do the work without the help of the real being, the great work, because the one that does the work is a real being. It means that if you're thinking that you are doing the work by yourself, if you don't remember your inner being, you are not doing the work. I mean, you're doing something else. But no, I'm not doing the great work. I'm just doing a simoniac work. You know what I mean? A simoniac work means somebody that thinks that he's self-sufficient. That he can do what uh, the being can do without the help of the being. That's not possible. Those beings that think in that way become demons. Simoniacs is what Dante Alighieri called them. Right? That deny the Christ. Simon the Magician says in his time, if Jesus of Nazareth did what he did by his own will, I, Simon the Magician, would do the same thing without the help of Jesus. Jesus Christ, Master of Eramentha, was the avatar and the way through which the Lord, the cosmic Christ, worked at that time. By denying him, by pushing him aside, he pushed the forces of the Lord outside and thinking that they will do the work only by themselves. That's called Simonianism. So, of course, with this knowledge, you know, a lot of people know this knowledge, or oh, Kabbalah, the many Kabbalists that think that they can do it without the help of the Lord. Right? They deny the Lord, the Christ. Without divinity, it's not possible to do the work. It is written, and God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God said, let there divide the waters from the waters. And God said, let us create the man. 
You see? It's God the one that is doing it. So therefore we have to remember. And that God inside of us, in physicality, is in the pineal gland as an atom. He has to develop completely and to be, become huge, great. And the only way to do that is by concentrating in him and meditating. Not by mechanically acting, because mechanicity belongs to the mind, belongs to Cain. Cain needs to be avenged seven times. This is how our intellectuality will become divine, because now it's animal. Yeah? No, it's the same question. The question is, can the, divine, can the human soul can self-realize without the help of, of the monad? That is impossible. It's not possible. It's like saying, for instance, can my shoes walk without me being inside of uh, my feet inside? It cannot. Yeah? If the shoes wants to walk, I have to put my feet inside of it and then they walk with me. But the, the shoes cannot walk without the help of, of the real being. You know what I mean? So the human soul cannot self-realize. Because it's called self-realization of the being. The brain, the pineal gland control the brain and the rest. But the feet, is like that movie, right? When the, when the feet appears and it's slapping the face of another one. This is impossible. What the monads are necessary. The, the monad is God itself. So the question is maybe God has the ego or eyes on those on the monad? The ego is not God. The ego is completely something which is ugly, created by us because of our ignorance. The ego is Cain. And the monad is. Jehovah Elohim above there in the sixth dimension that is connected to the pineal gland. That is a divine nature in us. Now the ego is something that shouldn't exist but exists within us. And the ego only exists below here in this three-dimensional world and in Klipov, in hell. Above in the superior dimensions, the ego does not exist. That uh, we call ego here, desire, only exists here in our physicality, our mind. And in order to, to, uh, to experience that, you have to enter into meditation. If you meditate and you concentrate and leave the physical body consciously, not with the mind, but with your consciousness, with your soul, then you will experience what is to be without ego? Personally, I did it. And I know. In my consciousness. And I know what is the ego and what is the being. But intellectually, we can of course uh, uh, argue here and have a lot of debate about that. But that will be the intellect. Will be Cain trying to justify. That God has no ego. God is no ego at all. We are ego. And while we are ego, we are here, down here, in hell, trying to explain the creation in our own way. Do you have any other question? Yeah? Um, earlier on in the lecture, you talked about how um, the monad uh, basically starts as a... As well, the monad doesn't start in a mineral, but it starts animating a mineral, and then eventually, over over many cosmic days, it learns how to uh, animate uh, more and more complex organisms until it gets to the intellectual animal. Um, let's say, like, we as intellectual animals devolve back into minerals. Does the monad then forget how to uh, create an intellectual animal? Like, is it, how, how, does, how does that happen? Does it have to learn again? No. So no. uh, even when it's a mineral, it knows how to make an intellectual The one, for instance, uh, uh, the failure one, that went into devolution, yeah. and the centroid, the matter, which is animal in hell, 
that moment never loses that knowledge. That knowledge is already there. And by that essence, evolving again from the mineral into a plant, animal, and humanoid again, that mona will acquire more experience related with only those processes. But it will be a stagnant again in that way, you know what I mean? Because we have to go beyond that. But in order to go beyond that, we have to act with knowledge, superior knowledge. Otherwise, we will be a stagnant. Of course, uh, the monad, uh, there are monads that acquire that type of knowledge uh, 3,000 times. The, uh, and of course, uh, the 3,000 times of acquiring uh, knowledge of mineral, plant, animal, and humanoid, they develop really very strong knowledge about those processes. But beyond that, they are like nothing. So of course uh, that's the, the same happened with uh, with a master, for instance, a fallen bodhisattva. The fallen bodhisattva uh, falls against into animal generation and start doing the same stupidities that I was doing before being self-realized. And he even can become a demon. But the monad never, never loses the mastery. You see, there are many demons, fallen angels there in, in hell which are demons, that the monas up there are masters. And they are just waiting for those demons to disintegrate in order to continue their development. You never, the mona never loses the experience or the knowledge that it acquires, never. And at any level. Well, there is uh, another question, no more questions. So I invite you to meditate that's the clue. Meditation. Without meditation, there is no knowledge to develop. But real meditation. Not mechanical. Real meditation goes within, directly to yourself, to know yourself. In relation with anything. Especially with the ego. Uh, thank you very much. To learn more about what you learned in this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Gloria and Publishing, available from booksellers worldwide. You may also be interested in online courses or upcoming retreats, all of which you can learn about at GnosticTeachings.org. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticTeachings.org. Thank you. May all beings be happy. Yeah.